Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel so today we're going to be starting our Dark Souls 3 detailed walkthrough so as promised I'd be doing a detailed walkthrough once I finished the 100% item walkthrough so what this is going to be is it's going to be a live com walkthrough um, so I'm going to be pretty much talking about anything I can think of um, when the time comes. I'm going to be talking about NPCs, how to start their quest lines, how to continue with their quest lines. I'm going to do 90% of the NPC quest lines. Uh, I'm going to explain why maybe certain items aren't there for you, uh, why certain invaders don't invade, and just all that kind of um, details and maybe some tips and uh, when to upgrade your weapon, what weapon you should maybe be going with, what re weapon I recommend in my opinion, maybe some details and tips how to kill some of the bosses, anything I can think of as we go. And yeah guys, I think we should get on with it. Right, so, um, character, I'm just going to call it detail just to know out of uh, my various characters what one we're going with uh, for this walkthrough, so i um, not really going to sit around here too much. I'm not sure if to go with the warrior of the night, um, I Kind of recommend the warrior if we're if you're new at the game. Uh, some of the tips I'm going to be giving in this walkthrough will probably be um, really casual for some players who have maybe played the previous games, but there'll definitely be some stuff in there for you guys too, the more experienced players. Uh, but yeah, so I think I'm going to go with the knight because I plan on going strength and dex through this uh, playthrough. Uh, gift, right? Um, so, fire gem is pretty good because you can uh, get a fire weapon as soon as you get to as soon as you get to fire link shrine, and the fire weapon are uh, is really helpful against certain enemies like dogs and uh, the guys will get infected and infected and transformed with the abyss and all that. So that's a pretty good uh, option if you're kind of having build trouble with them. Uh, then we've got the soul that will give us uh, 2,000 souls, so it's okay to level up maybe once or twice at the start. Uh, Cracked Red Eye Orb, not really much point. Um, Life Ring's pretty good, it kind of raises uh, your HP bar a tiny bit. Uh, also this Young White Branch, just as a little curious thing. If you choose this from the start, the Giant in the undead settlement will already be friends with you. This one, this young white branch will be like the the separated one, which uh, means you are friends with the giant. So you don't wouldn't have to go up the town and talk to him, so he don't fire at you if you choose this as a starting gift. It's kind of curious, but it's kind of cool. So yeah, I think we're gonna go with the soul just to level up a bit at the start. Um, Let's not take too long to do this, just change his hair. Whatever. Let's go. Okay, Cemetery of Ash. So this is uh, the tutorial level for Dark Souls 3, obviously. So the first thing I do is take my helmet off, just because I like to see my character. And um, also... I don't recommend this exactly, but I always take my shield off because um, I like to escape attacks by dodging and uh, not by defending with a shield. It's no particular reason, I, just, I guess it's just me, I like the style more uh, dodging. But um, I probably do recommend uh, keeping the shield on and using the shield for at least maybe your first playthrough. If you're completely new to the Souls games, obviously. Um, but yeah, uh, it's probably the this shield tactic's easier because you probably don't have to uh, keep an eye on your stamina that much. Uh, whereas if you're dodging, you have to keep an eye on what uh, attacks the enemy's going to do. You have to time it perfectly to dodge. And it's not as easy to keep your stamina management because you're probably not taking notice uh, of the green bar as much as with a shield. So yeah, I really recommend going with a shield at least. Um, at least if it's your first time playing a Dark Souls game. Uh, but anyway, uh, we picked up a blue Estus flask. So this is the Ash and Estus flask. And what this does is just like the Estus flask uh, recharges your HP, the Ash and Estus flask will recharge your mana. 
So mana on this game, anytime you use a spell if you're a mage or a miracle if you are a cleric, uh, it will use um, mana. Also on Dark Souls 3, every weapon, if you go to details, you can see it has a skill um, which will also use mana uh, every time you use it. You can use the skill by holding the L2 button or left trigger if you're on Xbox and uh, it will do its unique ability. Obviously this uh, long sword you have to actually uh, press R1 or R2 afterwards to actually use the mana because when we're only in the stance. So to kill this guy all you want to do is uh, concentrate on his moves. They all are pretty similar and none of them are too hard to dodge. Just uh, if he does the body slam then get away. If it looks like it's going to spin around just get away. Uh, if not just roll to the side and uh, you should have enough time to hit him. He's going to do the rolly attack. And boom! If you hit him enough, he will go into a stance where you can critical him or do a do a visceral attack, as you'd say, on Bloodborne and see if we can do it because he's not interested in it at the moment. Oh, there he goes. Oh, a bit late though. I got hit just at the right time. Uh, if you are watch, if you've watched a different walkthrough, maybe on YouTube, and it was uploaded before the official game uh, release, April the twelfth, then uh, this boss, this uh, boss, uh, this enemy will probably seem a lot easier uh, on the videos. And the reason for that is because uh, before the game was released uh, on patch uh, zero or one point zero zero calib calibration one point zero zero, the game was a I, a bit, I'd say a bit easier, but it seems like quite a bit easier, you know, to be honest. So, uh, if you're having trouble and maybe it seemed a really easy on maybe a walkthrough that came out before uh, April the 12th, then that's the reason, because the game was literally easier until it got uh, the day one patch. But anyway, once you kill him, we are going to get a uh, Titanite scale and... Um, We'll be going over what they're useful for later on. They're pretty much just useful for upgrading boss weapons. For anybody who obviously knows what that is already. If you've played other Dark Souls games. But yeah. Um, so I'm just going to continue through the tutorial. No getting lost. We're out of Estus. But it's okay because there's going to be a bonfire just here. There's going to be our first bonfire of the game. And uh, just here we should get a gesture. Rest gesture. So to use a gesture uh, on the PS4, it's uh, touching the left part of the touchpad, and uh, here are all our gestures. If you if you want to equip the different one, just go to the one you don't want anymore. Press triangle and equip the one you want. And yeah, that's simple as that. Really, it's nothing much to explain about gestures. So anyway, continuing down, we are going to pick up a. Titanite shard just here on top of here and this these things are unlike the the Titanite scale so we said the Titanite scale was useful to upgrade boss weapons uh, for those who do, don't know what a boss weapon is we'll be talking about that when the time comes but uh, common weapons like the longsword like the ones we've got now and uh, any drops off of enemies um, will be upgraded with Titanite uh, shards at the start and then once they're a certain level we'll need large Titanite shards, then Titanite chunks and then the Titanite slab for the final upgrade. Whereas the boss weapons um, will need uh, Titanite scales and then unique weapons as um, pickups, I didn't pick those homeward bones up, what's the homeward bones or fire bombs? I can't remember fire bombs there we go um, as for unique weapons weapons we can really only pick up once or in chests and dungeons and treasures um, for those unique weapons we are going to be using twinkling titanite which is a bit more rarer than uh, the titanite shards but uh, very late game we will be able to buy infinite of them anyway so yeah you shouldn't worry too much about that okay so uh, the first boss so as soon as we pull the sword out, we will be able to do damage to him. So as soon as you do that, 
what you want to do is attack him like crazy as much as you can just to get his health bar down a bit like I said with the warrior this should do uh, should be a bit easier the warrior does a lot more damage especially with his war cry uh, weapon art you'll probably have him down to about this much health before he even comes out of the of the uh, thing of his animation okay so this is the second part this one it's good to get a bit of damage in uh, also if once it's in this form uh, I'm getting hit pretty bad I should probably fucking move Okay, that was close. I risked it too much just for that stupid thing. I just wanted to see if this guy was weak to fire because uh, normally anything anything with the abyss around them is weak to fire but it looks like there's an exception for this guy so okay that was an unnecessary risk I took there with those fire bombs but I just wanted to I just wanted to confirm it because I knew that um, the later enemies, the little normal enemies that get infected with the abyss are extremely weak to fire. I just wanted to see if the boss was, but obviously it's not. It's obviously an exception. But it's good to know anyway. So we've got 7,000 souls at the moment. It's pretty good to level up. And we'll be doing that in a second. There's a few more items we can pick up though before getting to Firelink Shrine. Right, um, broken straight sword just here. Down this little path to our left, where these enemies are. Nope. There should be some homeward bones. Yeah, well, one homeward bone. Okay, fine. So. I know this may sound really casual, but I have had a few comments of people that don't know what Homeward Bones do. And for anybody stuck in a certain area, um, and think that there's no way out, I know there's a there is one area with a certain event a bit later on uh, that you get kind of stuck in a place, and there ain't no way out, but you do get a homeward bone there and that's what the homeward bone is useful for it will take you back to either the shrine bonfire of Phylic shrine or it will take you back to the last bonfire rested at but yeah just just in case anybody didn't know what a homeward bone does because I have had a few comments asking about this certain area and how you get out of it we'll be talking about that area a bit later on it's kind of a bit of a hidden area but once we get there, we'll talk about it. Right, so this guy to our left, I'd probably recommend going into Firelink and leveling up at this point. Especially if you're newer at the game and you don't really feel confident against this guy. Um, and that way you don't you lose your souls if you die, so... Oops, no stamina managed to it there for me. This guy's not too hard if you know what you're doing, you just have to bully him. And if he gets too close to the edge, then you just knock him off and... Yeah, it's probably the easiest way. But like I said, I do really recommend... Oh, he's still alive. Fuck. Not anymore. I do recommend going to level up and, and use your souls uh, before fighting this guy. Uh, anyway, this guy will give us the Uji Katana, the Master's Attire and the Master's Gloves. So if you're going a dex build, that's a really good weapon to start off with. And if you've got the fire gem, uh, you can you can infuse it in a sec, and that's a pretty good weapon to have at the start. Even though obviously if you do the fire infusion, then we'll lose the dexterity boost or bonus damage. But we'll be explaining all the infusions in a second. Ember down here. A new type of enemy, a dog. These guys are actually really weak to fire as well, so... If you're having trouble with these guys, just hit them with a firebomb or 
um, swipe them with the torch and yeah they won't be much trouble anymore right fire link shrine there's a lot of things we need to talk about here but first and most importantly we're gonna go over here activate the main bonfire of the game Sorry to you in case you didn't know this, which you should, this is our hub area. Um, just here with the main bonfire we can travel. Well, with any bonfire we can travel, but um, with this bonfire we need to travel to the High Wall of Lothric to continue through the game. Uh, also, burn Undead Bone Shard, we're going to explain that in a second actually. But um, So this NPC here, the Firekeeper, will level us up in exchange for our souls each level obviously requires more souls um, I'm not gonna go over the stats because they're quite um, obvious what everything does so uh, at the start it's good to get a bit more health could put a bit more into decks just to have the same amount of decks and strength um, let's see okay let's go over some of the NPCs so this guy over here is the typical depressed guy like in all the souls games this is Hawkwood uh, the first time we talk to him, he will give us the collapse gesture, and we'll be coming back to his quest a bit later on because there's nothing else we can do with him at the moment. Um, coming up here, we will have uh, this guy in the throne just here, which is one of the Lords of Cinders. So, this guy a bit later on will um, exchange boss souls for weapons once we beat a certain boss. Uh, that's what I was talking about, boss weapons. So boss weapons are weapons we got off of this guy f in exchange for, for a boss soul. Uh, also, uh, just in case you guys didn't know, uh, every time we beat a boss, oh, we didn't get a boss soul actually from the tutorial boss. I, didn't th I thought we did, but obviously not. Uh, every time we beat a boss, uh, we will get a unique soul uh, just here. And those are the souls. We can either consume them for um, souls, kind of like all these. We get a bit of souls depending on how big the soul is. Or we can leave the boss souls and go and talk to that guy and exchange him for a weapon. We won't have that ability straight away. We need to be um, the undead settlement boss to be able to do that. But um, anyway, what else? So let's go through the tunnel. Obviously there will be a lot more NPCs here uh, at later points as we go speaking with them through the game. But we'll, we'll talk about each one as we go. Uh... This woman over here is the merchant, so she will sell us things. Uh, at the start, she sells you pretty good things. You can buy a torch if you're scared of the dogs, or you want a bit of light or something. Uh, it's, so it's good to have, and I'm actually going to go and buy that because I want that for a bit later on. Uh, free embers for sale. She's got a few things. She's also got the uh, white sign soapstone if you want to co-op. Some homeward bones. A bit of spell. Some basic weapons. Uh, she will upgrade her wares depending on what ashes you give her. So uh, through the world we will find some ashes and every time you uh, give it to us, depending on those ashes, she will sell new things. Um, what else? The blacksmith over here. Very important NPC obviously. So we can reinforce our weapon. This is upgrade our weapon. Uh, like I said, normal weapons are the common weapons. We need titanite shards at the start. We need two to upgrade to plus one which we don't have at the moment. Uh, infused weapon, so this is uh, where we can use our gem. Remember the fire gem we could have picked at the start of the game? Then uh, we could have came here to the long sword and we could have um, put it into fire. Um, and what that does, I'm gonna go over them one by one. So obviously there's gonna be a lot, lot more than just these three, but um, to be able to um, infused with th certain things apart from obviously the gem we need just to have the possibility of infusing them we need to bring the bla the blacksmith certain coals which we'll find through the game uh, but I'm going to explain the three we've got here now and then once we pick up a gem or a weapon or a coal then I'm going to explain the other so refined what it does is it boosts uh, the strength and dex scale so uh, obviously I'm going to go over that tiny bit I guess so obviously each weapon scales okay so each weapon has a base damage which uh, where it says attack power below it says physical this one's got 110 and then it's got plus 15 bonus so how does it get a bonus uh, if you go down near the bottom it says DD 
Uh, so it's got D, the first one's strength, and D, uh, the second one's dexterity. So um, D's not a hard scale, it's like a really bad scale, it's like one of the worst ones. But um, it still does get a bit of bonus, depending on the more strength we've got and the more dex we've got, it will get a bit more bonus. So it's still getting 15 damage bonus just because of the amount of uh, strength and dexterity. Uh, for instance, the Uji Katana only gets E with strength, which is worse and D with um, dexterity uh, but obviously the more you upgrade them then the better scaling they'll have and stuff like that but uh, like I was saying infusing a weapon so if we infused the long sword with a refined gem it will boost it will change the um, scaling of strength and dex it will upgrade it to C which is pretty good this early on in the game but we don't have a refined gem quite yet anyway but uh, yeah, it, it will upgrade the scaling, but it will take down the base damage. As you can see, from 110 base damage, we'll have 99 base damage. But instead of 15 bonus, we'll have 24 bonus. So in the long run, if you are going to strength and dex build, it is worth it. So yeah, that's what a refined infusement does. So the raw gem, what it does is pretty much the opposite. It will take the uh, strength and dex scaling away and it will give it a lot more bonus, uh, sorry, uh, base damage. So as you can see, it would go from 110 to 143 base damage, but we wouldn't have any bonus just because we wouldn't have any scaling anymore. Uh, Fire Gem, pretty much the same story. It takes away the uh, strength and dex um, bonus, so we wouldn't have the 15 bonus, but we get 99 base fire damage, which is uh, quite a bit. So we could have had that already if we picked the fire gem at the start, which would have been pretty good. Um, but then, if you was going to continue through the game with this weapon, and you eventually upgrade it and get your uh, strength and dex up, it wouldn't be worth it in the long run, but you would be doing fire damage. Because even though the weapon's at plus 10, say, uh, you wouldn't have the C or B scaling you'd normally have, and you'd lose all that bonus. Uh, so it probably wouldn't be worth it in the long run, but you'd get fire damage, so yeah. Uh, we'll be talking about the other infusions as we go, get gems and coals and stuff. We'll be coming back and talking about everyone, what everything does. So repair equipment, I don't really know why this exists on this game, because as you can see below the sword, uh, every time we hit something, you can't really even tell, there we go, you tell a tiny, but I'm not sure if on YouTube you'll be able to tell that. Every time we hit something, the bar goes down. But um, it goes down so slow that I've never repaired a weapon on this game. Because every time you rest at the bonfire, it will recover itself. And yeah, I really don't feel like it's that easy to break a weapon on Dark Souls 3. I think the closest one I've been is to the Moonlight Sword. The Moonlight Great Sword is close to breaking, but yeah. Um, okay, so this is where we can choose how much Estus we want in each Estus flask. So we've got the HP Estus to the left and the Mana Estus or the Ashen Estus flask to the right. Uh, if, you're going, uh, if you're not going to be using spells and that and you're not really interested in your weapon art, um, just put them all into the uh, Health Estus, at least for now, because it will come in really uh, useful, especially for the Knight. Uh, maybe for the warrior you should probably leave one in Ashen Estus just to have the weapon art more often but it's you know it's not that useful at the moment. Um, reinforced Estus, Estus Flask so what this does it doesn't make it stronger but it we will have um, more Estus Flask as in quantity but to do this we have to go and find a Estus Shard and then bring it to him and then we will have one more Estus uh, Flask for whatever we want obviously the ashen or the or the standard estus flask um, but to make the flask actually stronger as in heal you more we're gonna need to find an undead bone shard and then come to the main bonfire and use this burn undead bone shard and that will give it a plus one effect and it will heal you more uh, what else well, obviously this a total of, or the, the highest possible Estus Flask is you can have 15 Estus Flasks at plus 10. And we will be picking up every single one of them in this playthrough as we go along. Uh, what else? Is, there's no NPCs down here at the moment because we haven't rescued any of them. I um, don't think there's any more actually at the moment. Hmm. Anything else I should talk about? Nah, not at the moment. Right, so I think we're ready to 
Oh no, okay, no, there's one more thing I want to mention actually. So if we come over here, we came in up here. We came in there. We're going to go over here to the left up this path. And outside here there's going to be a big tree. So this tree, every time we do PvP, we can come over here and examine him and he will give us a seed. And what the seed does is uh, if you're fed up of the invaders, you use the seed while you're being invaded. And the enemies in your world will also be able to attack the invader. So if they decide to run away and hide behind uh, an enemy, maybe you use the seed and yeah, they'll get attacked too. So uh, this tower, we we need 20,000 souls. If we get 20,000 souls, which I will do uh, in the next few episodes and come and open this. But uh, just in case you have got them already or you want to sit here farming for a long time. Uh, just uh, go to the merchant. Where is the merchant? Come to the merchant and buy this tower key right here and then you'll be able to open it. There's a load of secret items and really good stuff in there. But don't worry if you've not got them yet because it's the normal thing. Um, I will be doing that in the next few episodes anyway. I'll come back and open it just so you can nice and see everything. So don't worry about it too much. But yeah, whatever. Okay, so guys... Um, yeah, there's been episode one. Uh, if there is any um, questions you want to ask me about this area, then go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll try and um, answer as many as possible. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this and this was helpful, please go like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, remember, you can follow me on Twitter. Also, I just launched my first t-shirt campaign and if it's successful, there will be so many more designs. I'm really excited about this and hopefully it goes well. So uh, make sure you go and check out the t-shirt I designed. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you next episode.